one of the, of the brain. Let me say a few. This one right here that looks like a little leaf is so pretty. That one is called the cerebrum. And this right here is called the stem. This portion right here is the stem. And how do we say this one's called? Cerebrum. And then this little tiny gland that you see right here, that's when it's called the pituitary gland. And this portion right here, this one is called the thalamus. And this portion right here, as you see, kind of wavy, that one's called the corpus callosum, the largest of several bundles of nerve fibers that connect uh, that to the brain hemispheres. So did you guys find this interesting or not? I found it very, very interesting. So in this last days, is it important for us to study the body? Yes, there is anatomy in the Bible. So why should we not study that? It's important. And you know, right now, what I just did to you guys shared a little, it's probably like a dust of information. So if I just with a little dust off, but there's so much information we can know the proper function of each organ, the breathing, the brain, the nervous system, everything. And so God has, like I said before, a prescribed diet, which is made of plant-based diet, to fulfill the nourishment of this body of, along with water. And I'm not saying uh, juices are bad, just make sure you water, you're taking the proper amount of water. But just try to go easy on the juices. Focus more on the, the yummy water that those kittens want. So, before we close, we're going to turn to the book of Romans, chapter 12. So, as we're turning to Romans, chapter 12, I'm going to move a little here. chapter 12, it says, I beseech you that for brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Just like the Heavenly Father gave His Son, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish and have everlasting life. The same way Abraham offered up his son, but what happened at the end, God saw that he trusted God, he had faith, and at the end he didn't kill his son. But he had an offering, which that offering that replaced, instead of Isaac dying, represented Christ dying for our sins. God doesn't want us to die. God wants us to accept them and have eternal life. So as we have this altar here, yes, it is the altar of incense that we could come and give our prayers, but also in the altar over there, we can put our bodies there as an offering to God. But are we willing to do that? Are we willing to really consecrate the whole life, not only the mental, the spiritual, and the physical? Or do we want to be a rebellious house and do whatever we want? Now, I have a lot of learning and teaching to do, to share with you guys. But what I want to tell you is that uh, in this study, I want to talk about not only the organs, but also how are we supposed to dress as a female, as a male, the dress code, and uh, really pointing it all to Christ. Christ is our example, and that's who we're supposed to follow. What happened in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve sinned? God immediately got them some coats to cover their body. Now when you look at coat, in the felt that I had for this story, it shows a short sleeve coat and a short, like a like about this length. And that is not a coat. A coat covers all the way to the end pole. And that rather just giving you a little nugget of what we're going to talk about. So here we are. We're done with our story. And I'm just going to invite you to pray with me. And I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. 
And remember what the psalmist says, who is, which is David. What did he say? I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Are you fearfully and wonderfully made? Do you see God's created power? If you see God is powerful enough to create a human being, is he powerful enough to save you? I believe he is. He is powerful enough. So with that, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all the truth and all your blessings in this human temple. We pray, oh Lord, that your spirit may drive those truths to the home, to the conscience, where we know everything, and you know what we do wrong. So please lead us to repentance. May this be for the edification of people, and let um, unbelievers be converted. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us.